So the Deregulation Act, I've covered this before and I've got literally 10 minutes left, so I'll go over it very, very briefly. Hopefully you all know now that at the start of every single new tenancy, you have to carry out, here's another list for you, just some more instructions. You have to make sure that the smoke alarm and any relevant carbon monoxide detectors in rooms that have solid fuel are installed and are tested on the first day of the tenancy. And you need to document that. Because remember, if you go to serve notice later down the line, you need to have your evidence. Um, you also need to give them the how to rent guide, the gas cert, the license, the EPC, and the whole list of long things that you have to give to a tenant now before they move in. That must be done in order for you to be able to serve notice on that tenant throughout that tenancy. We offer a rent guarantee service and rent guarantee claims now, I may as well just start, uh, you know, jumping through hoops from the minute we submit a claim because the amount of things that they want from you now and the amount of things that you've got to provide and prove evidence of is just humongous just to get the claim accepted. Um, because what's not listed on here, what you've got to remember is what Sally again mentioned earlier, retaliatory eviction. So landlords that don't want to do maintenance and just say, do you know what, just kick them out, give them notice, you can't do that anymore. Because if they've got an improvement notice put on that property, you can't serve Section 21 for six months. You have to keep that tenant and you'll have to do the work. Even if they're not paying the rent? Absolutely. And a lot of landlords say to me, I'm not doing that work, they're not paying the rent. It's actually the worst time not to do the work. It is absolutely, honestly, can't tell you enough, it's the worst time to not comply with your obligations because if the tenant's not paying the rent, the likelihood is you're going to have to take them to court to get them out. If you turn up at court, Mr Landlord, and you haven't done your maintenance, that Section 8 can be thrown out. It really can. And a lot of landlords, morally it feels wrong, why should you do repairs? It's for them not to pay the rent. Yeah. One of the questions in the rent guarantee claim now when we're making it is, have there been any complaints about maintenance? And if there have, can you provide me with the uh, complaint that's been given and your response so that they can see whether it's adequate? But if they don't complain about any repairs, okay. then there's no problem then, is there? If, they, if you are not aware of any maintenance... Well, they haven't made any complaints to the estate agency. Yeah, if, if you're not aware... I'm going to be clear here. If you're not aware, if you are aware but they didn't complain but you know that there's a big hole in the roof, you've got a problem. Um, but if you're not aware, you can't, com you, you can't repair. Um, so if you are aware, though, you must. And you now have to respond to a tenant. I don't know who knows this neither. But you now have to respond to a tenant in writing within a reasonable time scale and keep that documented. It's a lot easier now because we've got email and text message and things like that. But you can't have a verbal conversation it's got to be in writing within a reasonable time scale. Any response to maintenance? I would say so, yeah. It's in writing and you, if you just keep the trail, it should be. Section 21, major changes. This is what we're talking about now. You should all know that now um, the Section 21 is a Form 6A. It's a prescribed form. It's no longer just a written format. It has to be the prescribed form. And you have to make sure you've complied with all of these requirements before you can serve a notice. It has a six month expiry, whereas before, the, um, I think the longest um, successful Section 21 was six years after it was served. Now it only has a lifespan of six months. And the other key factor is to remember you cannot serve it any sooner than four months after the tenancy started. So in a six month tenancy you have to allow four months to pass before you can serve it. Anybody that's got licence, because this is the one that gets missed off, because it doesn't apply to everyone. Most people know about gas, how to rent and everything else. But if a property is licensable, you have to have given the tenant the licence prior to the start of tenancy, or you can't serve notice. And there's been a couple of things um, in Willenhall and Warsaw where they are looking to introduce selective licensing. Anybody got, you've got properties in those areas, yep. So um, they are looking to bring it in in those areas. 
there's a, please look into it because there's actually a um, like a, a meeting to discuss with landlords and people within that area as to whether they think it would be worth it. No, it's going to be selective license. If some, if the council selectively license an area, they will say this area, no matter what property is in there, a one bed flat, a two bed, will need a license. And roughly at the moment, I think the license cost is about six hundred pound. Yeah. They're running it for five years. Well, we had Liverpool. And they brought this out in 2015. We're now at the end of 2017, and we've only just got our first batch of licences through. The scheme ends in two years, and they're not going to renew it. Uh, but, you know, if you need a licence, you've got to comply. And again, when we served Section 21 on one of our tenants, the first thing the council said to us was, can I have evidence that you've given them a copy of the licence? And I said, yeah, if you give us one, we applied for it two years ago. Oh, OK, then. Evidence of having the application submitted was enough because we can't issue a licence that the council haven't given us. But bear that one in mind because it's one that people forget.